What's up? I'm Vin, and today I want to take a look at logistic growth functions. So here's the equation for a logistic growth function, and here's a graph. And the way these things behave is the rate of change or the slope increases in the beginning. And then at this halfway point, the rate of change starts to decrease until the y values cap off at this horizontal asymptote L, which is the maximum value. So now we're going to look at a few word problems involving these functions. So this is the first question I want to look at, and take a moment to read through this. We have a certain species of birds that the population follows a logistic growth model and T is measured in years. So what I want to do here is we're going to first find the initial bird population. So we're going to type this function right into the calculator. So if we have a fraction, we could write alpha Y equals enter or type that in. And that's going to make it easy to input 5,600 over, and we're going to have 0 0.5 plus 27.5 and then e is second natural log the button right next to four and then we've got negative 0.044 t but we're going to use x so the variable x is still going to do the trick so if we want the initial bird population all we have to do here is just press second graph and look at t equals zero we have a bird population of 200 so we're just going to transfer that information here that for part a the population at zero, which is n of zero, is going to be 200. So we have 200 birds at the start of the question. But now for part b, we want to sketch a graph of the function n of t. So notice if I press graph, the graph doesn't show us anything. And that's because if we look at the table, notice the y values immediately start at 200. And our maximum y value is right now at 10. The standard mode here goes negative 10 to 10 for the x and the y. So what I like to do for questions like this is there's a few ways you could go through with this. You could switch the table to count by something like tens. And what you do here is you just keep scrolling until you see the table eventually start to cap off. Now, this is going to take a little bit. Like notice I have to keep scrolling and eventually the table caps off at 11,200. So that looks like our maximum value. But just know that another option here would be to count by hundreds right away. Let's say I didn't feel like scrolling that far. If I count by hundreds, you see I could find the maximum value even sooner. So I'm just going to switch it back to tens because that's going to show a general progression here. But if we look back at the table, remember what we saw, that at about 320 is when this started to cap off. And the maximum x value that we need is at about 320 before this thing reaches its maximum height. And then the maximum y value, we could go up to 12,000 so that we could get a clear picture. So remember, we had to go out to about 320 to see the maximum y value, and we had to go up to 11,200. So I'm gonna go out to 12,000 just to give us a little extra space. And notice that this gives us a really nice picture of what's going on. So when we produce this sketch, all we wanna do here is we're just gonna draw our graph out. So let's just go ahead and make that neater. All right, that's a little bit better. Our initial population was at 200. So this is our t-axis, and this is our n of t-axis. And the curve is going to go something like this, OK? And the maximum height we saw from the table of values was 11,200. So this is just going to give us a rough idea of what's going on. If I wanted to add in the midpoint here, halfway to 11,200 is 5,600. So, and another detail too is just know I could find all those significant values using calculus concepts, but I'm going to pretend we didn't learn that yet. So if I want to know exactly when does the function reach 5,600, let's say I want to put that on the x-axis or the t-axis, I could just go ahead and graph the line y equals 5,600. And notice that it's going, to intersect, it's going to intersect the graph right here. So if I press second trace 5, that's going to tell me what my x value is when we reach the halfway point. So if I hit enter before and enter after the intersection, and enter a third time at about 91.076. So on the t-axis, it's going to take 91.076 years for us to reach this halfway point. OK, so this is a decent enough sketch that models the function. It includes all the significant values. It has the maximum height. It has the halfway point on the y and the x-axis. And it has the initial population here. So. The last question is looking at what size does the population approach as time goes on? Well, as time goes on, 
we see here that the maximum height that we're approaching is 11,200 birds. This is the cutoff in the population. So we could see here that up until about 91 years, the rate of change of this curve is increasing. So the population is increasing at a faster rate, but then at about this time is when the population starts to slow down. So now let's look at another question here. So take a moment to read through this. And now we have a disease spreads through a city with a population of 10,000. And after two days, the number of people infected is modeled by another logistic growth function, this time V of T. So we want to find out how many people are there how many people were infected initially. So all we're going to do now is just switch over and we're going to swap out the value. So we have 10,000 in the uh, in the numerator here. So just make sure we have four zeros there. And now we have just five plus, and we have 1245. So I'll just delete all those extra pieces. And our exponent is going to be negative 0.97t. But once again, we're just going to use x. Okay, so now that just represents the equation. Now I'm going to press zoom six. And we could see that part of our graph shows up. But remember, if I want to, let's pretend that I'm counting again, I'm starting at zero, and I'm counting by ones. If I look at the table here, this is not giving us a super clear picture as to what's going on. But actually, eventually, you see, we actually reached the maximum value by about 17. So counting by ones here actually did make things jump out at us. So our x-axis, I will send out to about 18. Or I can even go out to 17 here because that's when we reached the maximum height. And just know the concept is we never truly reach the maximum height. It's just once the calculator reaches 0.9, it gets tired of rounding and it just makes the rest of the values exactly the maximum value. So here we'll go out to 17 and we'll go up to 2200 to get a clear picture. So we're going out to an X value of 17. And I'll start this at negative one because we don't need to go back in time. And this thing went up to about 2000. So I'll go up to 2200 just so we get a full picture. So there's our nice logistic growth curve again. But if we look, how many people are there infected initially? If we go back and answer this question, initially for part A, we have V of zero is equal to eight. So we have eight people infected. And then we wanna find the number of infected people after one day, two day, and six days. So now we're just gonna find more values. So V of one, we could round to 21. Now, there's some debate with these questions, but the idea in this video is using the logistic growth curves, not how do we round in scenarios like this, but some people would say, oh, you should round to 20 because the next person isn't fully infected yet. But let's just say we're gonna round properly to the nearest whole number or backwards, depending on if this digit is five or higher or four or less. So we have 21 people infected after day one. After day two, we're gonna have 54 people infected. And then after six days, if we look at six days, that's going to be 1,150 people infected. Okay, and the idea of like why these curves are useful is that in the example of the disease, it's like eventually the rate of change of the disease, like it's spreading starts to slow down until we reach some sort of maximum value here. And now the last question is, does the disease infect the whole city? Well, if we look at our table of values again, remember the disease capped off at about 2000 people. And if there's 10,000 people in the whole city, no, the disease did not infect the whole city. So in this case, we're not actually asked to find a graph of this function, but we could utilize the graph here and see that 2000 is the maximum value here. So starting at eight people, we could see this logistic growth curve is capping out at about 2000. So for part C, no, the disease does not infect the whole city. The maximum value is 2000. Okay, well, this is going to conclude this video on logistic growth curves. If you found this video to be helpful, please like and subscribe. It really helps me grow the channel. And if you've got any requests, just leave the topic or topics you want me to cover in the comments section below. And thanks for watching.